was looking at something uh, because I have this amplifier that I want to get rid of, but I want to keep the spare tubes, and I'm like, well, how much are my tubes worth? And they're, they're IMAX. Um, but anyway, we're on ARF Parts website and can't find any for sale, um, which is kind of strange. Um, let's see. Tubes. Transmitting tubes. So we have 3-500ZG. Um, I have that particular one in an amplifier, and I don't like them. Other than like looking through all these, um, I don't see an option for just regular 3-500Z. So maybe we, well, when we pull it up under this, I'll just show you guys really quick. 3-400Z comparison. Um, you can get nothing. A pair of three would be seven hundred forty-nine. Four would be a thousand dollars. They they just they don't have them. There's nothing here. I, I don't know what the deal is. Let's just try looking up transmitting tubes. Let's just, just see what we end up finding out. I don't know what this thing is. Um. That's another weird tube. They get five pages of crap here. 807s. Five seventy two B. All by itself, one tube, two hundred dollars. So, only to be used in the vertical position. A lot of these uh, amplifiers, the Dentron Clipperton, the Yesu, the Heath Kit, they're all um, horizontal. I don't know any amps where they're in the normal position other than the um, uh, the uh, Maritrons. Why is this not changing? Okay. So, um, I have no idea what the hell a 304 is. 807, so a little more like an audio tube. Um, I don't even see anything they sell that like we would even really use for ham radio. But, so, my point is, I think that the supply of 3-500Zs is dried up. I, I don't think you can get, if you can't get it from RF parts, I'm not sure where the hell you're going to get it. I mean, you're going to be chancing buying used ones on um, eBay or something. I mean, look at all these tubes. 3CX1500. Two thousand dollars, three thousand, two thousand dollars. I mean, see, here's the thing. You see these costs of these things. This tube here, this tube here. Okay. Like this is ridiculous. And the thing is, a brand new. Uh, what do they call it? The Mercury amp. What is it like? Two or three thousand dollars. Um. The cost of one of these tubes for one of these really expensive amplifiers is as much as, you know, it's just ridiculous. Um, 8877s, uh, medical. Um, I don't have anything that uses anything but 3-500Zs. I don't have ceramic tubes. Um, and the reason I don't have any ceramic tubes is because... I don't like how much they cost. They've never been cheap. And you have to wait for them to warm up in most cases. I don't... Uh, well, I don't like the idea. I like to be able to turn my amp on and just use it. That's how I, I like to be. So... 
Well, I don't see anything. These are 811s. That's actually a good uh, price for a set of 811s. Um, 200 bucks. Um, let's see. 150 for three. So this would be, you know, you could buy this for your 811H. 200 bucks to retube it. I mean, that's fair. A single tube for 50 bucks, that's fair. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Really strange. So, I, I don't think... It doesn't look like to me... That there is any 3-500s. And so this is a little concerning. Let me see if I can just zoom out a little better. Um, which page are we on? Okay, let's just click next. I don't know what's up with this. This web page is not really uh, responding very well. A 4-400. So you could use the 4-400. You have to make some changes. Um, but that thing is $649 for one tube. You would have to spend like $1,300, $1,500, $1,500 to get a pair. Uh, this one here, I don't know. So that's the only tube that they sell that could be made to work in an amplifier like that. And that's if you have the room for it to fit. I know people that have used that tube. Um, they've used that tube in a, uh, um, a Kenwood TL922. There's a 4-400 for 349. Um, 454 but they make less power from what I understand and I don't remember what you have to change something to do with the filament or something you put it in uh, filament in series instead of parallel or I don't know um some of these are quite expensive Four dash four hundred. Lots of four dash four hundreds available. And these are old used tubes, by the way. So um, I, I don't know where they would be from, but they're they're used. So um, and I wonder how many pages of crap they got on here. So. If we go to the search function, because I know somebody's going to ask me this, we just go in here. Three dash five hundred, and I'm going to just type it like that because there's a Z and ZG and and different things. So we get here these socket holders. There's a chimney. Uh, here's another chimney, another chimney, another chimney. Out of stock, a set of six for $1,500. Uh, vintage Millen ceramic socket, $59, 24, 74. Okay, next page. Um, iMac tube socket, plastic, $75. Uh, here's one for 12. Here's a quad set. For a thousand dollars out of stock, they don't have them. Made in China. Um, three of them for seven forty-nine. So if they did have them, uh, they don't seem to be selling them as a pair. Now, 
why don't we just come up here and we'll go uh, three dash five hundred Z. And we'll just see. Oh, the three fifty Z. Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Oh, I wonder about DX Engineering. Yeah, they might sell them. Okay, so. Okay. Um, Penta Labs. None of these companies are in business, so that's the thing. Um, let me go into DX Engineering here and see if they have them. I have a feeling they will not have them. 359 a tube for the Ameritron replacement tube. In stock, more than 10 available. Okay, so, so you're going to pay 359 So the reason I'm looking this up is that I want to sell this amplifier. It has original iMac tubes in it with bright red lettering on it. So they're, they're definitely better than these tubes, I guarantee it. But at $360 plus tax, basically, you'd be 700 and something dollars uh, to get a set of these. So this is like why like a lot of this stuff is becoming cost prohibitive. Uh, let me see if we have uh, amplifier replacement parts. So it's interesting that RF parts does not have any though. That seems to be a little strange. They've got a set of 811s for a little bit more than what we saw. Um, a 3CX800 for about $1,000. 811 tube all by itself, $54. Um, this Penta Labs is 309 Um $106 for a 572B. Here is a plate choke for $32. It's actually really, really great uh, if you want to um, uh, work on an amp that doesn't have 160 um, because it's usually for an Ameritron and it has 160. Here is a set of tubes. Um, they would probably be only three left or soon. 600 so so the best deal that I can see so far is six hundred and nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents to retube one of these with some used tubes I'm they have to be used there's no way these aren't used I mean um, let's see um, uh, there's no way these are new. I mean, they're just not. This company is not making tubes in Ventura, California anymore. Trust me. It'd be great if they were. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. So, lots of money for those. Hmm. Power supply for geez. Anyway, so that's what what there is on that. And if we went on to like uh, eBay, we would probably find uh, all sorts of prices. Uh, new match pair of Amperex 3-500s. Um, and that might be just the current bid. Let's go uh, um, buying format. Buy it now. Okay. A single tube, 275. A pair, 550. These seem to be like the same image that's used on DX Engineering. I'm wondering if that maybe is them selling it. Platinum tubes, 
98.8% positive feedback, which means that they've had probably a lot of bad feedback, actually. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Now, my Tentec amplifier has a tube that kind of looks like this, and it's RF parts. Um, I've got an iMac tube that just looks absolutely brand new. Better than this one. See how the letters are kind of brown on here? Yeah, well, mine doesn't look like that. Here's a really nice amplifier. This is a Maritron. I like these. AL82. But the point is, um, because of people like BBI and all the CB guys and stuff like that, they've, they've driven the prices of all this crap up because they've glorized this tube. And, you know, they've dried up the supply and, and you know, all, all that crap. Here's an original iMac right here. These are the graphite tubes. I I don't they don't put out any more in my experience but people think they do. Anyway, you know the average prices are gonna be pretty high for a pair. Um but yeah, the BBI guy makes videos and he shoved three of them into an SB220. He shows that you can, you know, do all this crazy stuff. So with an SB220 or any amp that runs a pair of these, you can, basically after 100 watts, the, I, I forgot what the amp has, like 18 dB gain, if it's designed correctly. So after about 12 or 1500 watts you're when you shove more power into the amp what's happening is the other power is just coming out the other side it's not actually you know, amplifying it so like if you were to drive the thing with 500 watts you would basically be using 100 watts to come up with 1200 and then the other 500 would add to that 1200 so you would be like six uh, 1700 almost you know maybe 2000 watts out of the amp so what they're they've demonstrated is like you can just like drive the crap out of the amp and it'll still survive and they've they've showed them like putting all you know, like six or seven hundred watts into an sb220 and getting 3000 watts out or something like that you know but it it really stops multiplying at a certain point and but it will the other the, it doesn't like waste the power that's put into it. It'll accept it and just it just goes right out the other side. So we have two pages of these on um, eBay, which is not like it used to be. I mean, there used to be like 20 or 30 pages. So the supply for these tubes are drying up, guys. I mean, I hate to tell you. I've got three amps that all use this tube, you know, so I'm good because I don't use all three of them all the time. And they're very, very resilient tube, um, but you know they can be uh, abused and, and they will fail. And they, the solder does like to come out of the pins. That's the biggest thing that happens, because the um, what happens is your uh, tube socket it wears out, and then the little fingers that clamp on the pins spread out a little bit, and then it causes it to heat up and then the solder drops out and then if you don't use antimony or some like silver bearing solder and you reflow the pin well you'll just end up having regular solder just fall out again but anyway i just thought i would bring this up it's uh, interesting that rf parts does not have any available and it's not a good sign